Hello everybody, June here. So first I want to say that this is not a tutorial unless you hate yourself, in which case knock yourself out. This is really uh, more of a process uh, vlog of me trying to make 1920s underpinnings and things just not going the way that I want them to and then having to rethink the whole thing. So that is basically the overarching plot of this video. But the reason that I'm making these set of underpinnings is because I want to make a 1920s ensemble and as any customer knows, you have to start from the inside out because silhouettes are very different, um, you know, varying time periods and modern bra just doesn't look right under 1920s clothing. So I'm starting with the underpinnings and working my way out. This is the first video in that series. And honestly, I don't know when the other videos are gonna come out, if they're going to come out, because I'm getting way ahead of myself here. But that is the idea. I want to make a 1920s outfit for a historical uh, picnic in July in the park. And you gotta start somewhere. So I'm starting with my underpinnings, so enjoy. Hello, long time no see. Today, I am going to start working on something that I didn't actually ever think I would do, and that is 1920s clothing. And I don't mean like inspired, I mean like actual patterns from the period, 1920s-ish. And the reason that I'm doing this is because, well, first I was gonna go to a local um, 1920s sort of era uh, party that happens, uh, in summer and so I had tickets for that for last year but hello it was 2020 and nothing happened last year uh, but now I'm going to a different event it is a picnic in the park in July and it's hot it is a historical costume and picnic so that is how I decided that 1920s was the way to go minimal undergarments um, light clothing so to start me off I want to start with this pattern and let's see if I can get the glare off but it is a 1920s uh, set of undergarments. It's not actually a corset. Uh, it's just something really to keep my breast in place um, and to basically make me flat on the front so that I can fit on my or in my dress that I'm going to make and get the right silhouette. So right now I am working on cutting the pattern pieces and let me move this out of the way. There's really only five or well, four pattern pieces. This is a strap, then front, side, back, etc. But I am making a muslin because like with everything, you just don't know how it's gonna fit, what's gonna fit. So I'm gonna work on the muslin today and I think I'm not gonna be able to finish it because it calls for hook and eye tape to close it and I don't have any hook and eye tape. But I'm gonna try to get as far as I can with this. I might actually try to put a zipper on the side just for the muslin. And then once I'm actually ready to, to sew with the final fabric, which I don't have, I might buy Cotill, then I'll buy the hook and eye tape. So let's get to cutting. And I decided to cut out the muslin from actual muslin fabric. And on second thought, that was not the best idea. If I had to do this again, I would probably cut it out in a sturdier fabric like canvas or a cotton twill or something like that. That way you can get a little bit more structure on the actual garment or, or rather the muslin and you can get a better idea of what it looks like. The rule of thumb is use the same sort of fabric for your muslin as you will use for your final garment. I don't always follow that uh, maxim but you know. This is just the muslin but I do want to make sure that I mark well the notches are although I cut into these uh, and I also want to make sure that I mark the, uh, the, what is this called? The grain line, um, on the actual pattern pieces in a moment, because I want to make sure that everything is right and that everything matches properly. In the final garment, when I get to that, I won't cut into the fabric. I'll just mark it with fabric markers because I don't want there to be like a point of, uh, weakness where this whole thing can unravel because it will take some strain it will take a little bit of um, of pushing and pulling to get it to basically tuck me in <sighs> okay so I made the muslin 
and I tried it on and it's okay on my bust but it's enormous at the hips and that has a lot to do with the fact that I have very small hips for the rest of my measurements so I was expecting that but it also doesn't really have any kind of compression on my stomach so while it does flatten out my bust that's all that it does and honestly um, I don't know how to fix it and like here you can see how much I would have to take off just so that it's not flapping around it's still not actually giving me any compression some of this here too and then here so I'm thinking that if all it's gonna do the pattern pieces keep falling on the floor over there if all that it is gonna do is compress my bust then I may be better off just making a bandeau bra uh, which will serve my purposes because my main concern really is compressing my bust to stay in place and give me um, that sort of flat chest 1920 silhouette. Um, I do have a belly, so I know my belly is not going to be flat unless I make a proper corset. And like, I'm trying to avoid it. That is the whole point of going 1920s is so that I don't have to wear a heavy corset. So I'm going to rethink this whole, um, uh, like full body, body corset thing and think about making a band though, so stay tuned. Okay, so after thinking about this a lot over the last few days, I have decided that I am scrapping the corselet idea altogether and I am going to make a bandeau style bralette. I've been doing a lot of research um, about this and I am going to go with one that is from a book that I'll link in the description below, well, at least the idea of it. And I am going to put lacing um, holes, grommets, in the back to secure it that way. This is for two reasons. One, because it'll make fitting it easier. And two, because there's no elastic in uh, this fabric. That is one way to adjust for, well, basically your body, right? Whether you need a little bit more room one day, a little bit less room another day. And so it'll be easier to get an overall uh, better fit with the lace. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a strip of fabric and I'm going to fit it around my bust. Uh, and I'm thinking that the final uh, strip is going to be roughly my bust circumference minus one inch that will still leave me another inch that will come off from uh, the seam allowance. So I have to fold it in and I'm going to try that. And I think it's going to work. I think I might have to do some adjusting to the pattern that I, that I saw. So it's not just one strip of fabric, but give it a little bit of shaping with some darts because I'm slightly bustier. I think than what they had in mind, uh, but I think this is going to work. So let's go for it. As I was getting ready to cut the strip of fabric, I thought that I would just cut it the width of the fabric because I thought I might be able to use the selvages as raw end finishers. And that didn't work out in the end, as you'll see, but I'm cutting it the width of the fabric and then I'm cutting it nine inches tall, even though the book I'm working from says eight inches. I did this again because I'm slightly bustier than what they had in mind and the bust takes space not just horizontally but also vertically so I felt like I needed more fabric there for coverage. I just did a very quick try on before I do anything so all I've done is cut the strip uh, of fabric. So I cut the strip of fabric uh, 42 inches I think. And even then, there was a lot of overlap in the back. And because I'm lacing, I don't need an overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut three and a half inches at the back uh, for each side. And I've, I've ma marked my center uh, front here because I'm going to use that in a minute. And then I also decided when I needed to dart the bottom hem so that the so that basically the fabric cups the breasts rather than just flap out which is what it does and so I'm gonna make this dart symmetrical on both sides so I sewed my darts and now 
to finish the back before I, I finish the top and the bottom ends, what I'm going to do is I am going to sew the pieces that I cut off, the three and a half inches or whatever it was I cut off, I'm going to sew them to the back. And this will do two things. One, it will make room for my boning, uh, which is here. I'm going to put a bone uh, on the inside, so on the edge, so that my eyelets then don't... Uh, make the fabric pucker and then it will give me a little bit of reinforcement for the eyelets so i'm gonna fold each uh, piece in half and sew it to the edge of the fabric at about um i'm gonna say a half inch seam allowance then fold it to the inside and top stitch uh three eighths of an inch away to make room for my boning and then i'm gonna stitch again uh to secure this to the other side so let's uh, get to the sewing machine i did in fact take this to the sewing machine but i screwed up the exposure so i can't use the footage but anyway i stitched it and now i'm trimming my seams because they're pretty bulky and i am pressing them to the inside although it doesn't really matter because it's going to be folded press 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 if you're wondering about this little iron it's great for small spaces i do have a full size one but for tiny seams like this, this was fine. So I pressed it again, and then now I'm folding it to the inside. Give it another good press. Press, press, press. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And it is time to top stitch. And on that side, I am sewing 3 8 of an inch away from the edge to make my casing for my boning. And then on the other end, I'm going in far enough so that it catches the other end of the facing. And this is just going to make everything nice and tidy and secure. And eventually I will put my grommets, which I keep calling eyelets, but they're grommets, on the space between the two stitch lines. In case you haven't figured this out, and of course you have because you're not stupid, I'm making this up as I go. So uh, I realized that before I could hem both sides, so the top and the bottom of this thing, I had to put in the boning. So the first hem I'm going to do is the bottom hem. That way when I put the bone in, um, it's resting on the bottom, not falling out, and then I can fold the top. So I have searched my, my raw edges and listen, this is not a historically accurate sew. It is just what will do the job. I'm gonna fold it up half an inch and then from there, I'm just going to eyeball it. Now that I folded the bottom hem up, I'm going to top stitch it. But in doing that, I am also going to trap this um, twill tape in the stitch because I'm going to use that twill tape to um, guide the gathering later because I'm going to gather the center front a little and it will also give it a little bit of structure. So I'm going to do that. And then when I do the top after putting in the bones, I will do the same and then gather the excess. Okay, so I've made the casing and I sealed the bottom. So now what I need to do is measure, if I can get this undone, how much boning will actually be required. And it's going to be tricky. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? Because I searched, I finished the <laughs> the seams, which sealed uh, my boning channel. So now I'm going to have to unpick that seam. So another day, another time to mess up. Last night, after I realized that by finishing the top um, seam or the top hem, I had essentially closed my, my uh, boning channel. Um, I decided that it was time to call it for the night and go to bed. So that's what I did. And so now what I've done is um, <clears throat> I have uh, just basically uh, removed the serging from that end. And I have inserted the first bone here just to, uh, to see how much boning I needed. And basically the way to do this is to measure how long your boning channel is. 
And then remember that there is going to be about half an inch from the top where you can't have the bone because you're gonna have to top stitch this. So in my case, the boning is about six and three quarter inches. It could, it could be a slightly um, longer length, like maybe uh, the full seven inches, but I'd rather play it safe. So I've done one bone and uh, now I'm gonna do the other bone for the other side, which of course means I still have to remove the serging from that end. So here I have my boning. This is, by the way, a synthetic whale bone. And so I'm just gonna measure six and three quarter inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three quarter inches. Just mark it there. Oh, this doesn't work. I hope if you get a pen or pencil that works. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three quarters. There we go. And uh, this is when you get your heavy tools out and cut to the side. And now I want to make sure that these bones don't poke through my fabric. So first I'm going to like slightly round them with my pliers here, my cutters. And then I'm going to use a file to file the corners. And now I'm going to slide it into my boning channel here. It's a little snug. Okay, so this bone could have actually been a little longer, but you know what? I am not gonna waste any more bones. So now would be the time to actually finish the <clears throat> the top raw edge without sealing your channel. So that's what I'm going to do. And then uh, once I just finish this little bit here and the little bit of the other end, I am going to top stitch the top hem to secure everything in place. So now my bones are all nice and encased in their channels and both the top and the bottom of the of the uh, um, bra are top stitch and finished. The next thing I have to do is gather or pleat these, um, th this center front here, because if you remember, I put in some tool tape for security, and now I'm going to gather it. Well, actually, I'm going to pleat it, but really just by eye. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's like nobody's going to see this. And here it is, all um, pleated and gathered. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't look great, but it, it is what it is and it will do the job. So the next step is to do the grommets in the back so that I can lace this properly, see how it fits, and then decide on the uh, strap placement, which is added at the very end. I have ordered the grommets and the grommet setting tool, and that should arrive tomorrow. So that'll be the next step. So today, um, I've done all that I can do, and granted, I'm wearing a modern bra, but I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. We'll see. Okay, so another day, and the grommet setter has arrived. So now I'm going to attempt to put the grommets on this thing. And I've decided that I want seven grommets, and I have sort of measured to see how many I would need to get a snuggly fit that they wouldn't be spread out too much and seven might be a little much um, I think that maybe I could do with six but I'm gonna go with seven because why not and to go with seven and get them sort of evenly spaced out I'm going to use this tool here this is normally used for uh, buttons and buttonholes but I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use it for this. It really is is the same thing, and I'm gonna go about I don't know a quarter inch from the end of the boning here to mark the placement for the grommets. And the grommets I'm using are quarter inch grommets, but that is quarter inch inside the hole, so the actual width of the grommet uh, is a little more. So I don't know. This is not an exact science. 
I just sort of want it to be even and nice and pretty. So marking here. Yeah, that should be good. And then to make sure that they're on the same side, uh, on the same uh, place on the other side, I'm just going to fold these together and take a pin, stick it through, and mark on the other side. And I'm going to do that for all of them. Okay, I'm all set up. And the way that you do this is you take this part of the, of the grommet. It's a grommet and washer set. And this part is the part that actually gets squished to set the grommet. So you put this on the bottom end of the die and right side down, you sort of center the find actually the hole for this one because I missed it right. you center the die uh, on that marking play the washer on top and squeeze and that should have cut the fabric as it said it and so now you have a nice grommet with a washer in the back and so we're gonna do all of the other ones the same way all right so all the grommets are in I actually put them the right way and um, I didn't really have um, issues I mean they're not perfectly aligned but that's okay like I said no one's gonna see this so let me see here you go that is the back not bad my camera stopped recording, but for the straps, I wanted them 20 inches long to begin with, and I want the finished strap to be one inch wide, so I cut them three inches wide, so that when I use a half inch seam allowance uh, and turn them uh, to the right side, my straps will be one inch wide. And so I'm going to sew them. I'm going to finish one of the edges, uh, because that's going to be the one on the front, which is permanent, uh, while I find the position for the straps. And then once I settle on the actual length, I will uh, cut them to size and finish the other end. After I finish sewing the straps together, I turn them right side out, finish the one edge as I said, and gave them a good press. Here what I'm doing is I'm using a blind hem foot to stitch very, very close to the edge. I'm not actually using the blind hem function, and you could do this with any kind of edge stitching foot, and yes, my machine was acting up, it's been weird. So I'm doing the stop stitching so that when I wash this garment, the straps don't just bunch up and they sort of stay flat, and that's that. Okay, so we're nearly done. I sew the straps, then I laced myself into this thing, or rather, I had help lacing myself into this thing, and placed the straps where they fit nicely on my body. And what I'm going to do now is mirror the straps on the other side so that they are, um, you know, at the same distance from the center body and then in the same position in the back. Just going to put a little mark on there and if you're wondering about these pencils I'm using they are just colored pencils so they wash out in the wash they are not friction pens friction pens I do not recommend they don't actually go away it only appears to go away when you uh, press it but if it ever if it ever gets cold again like in the winter they will come back so don't use friction pens. And here is a final bra in all its glory. That gathering slash uh, pleating looks terrible, but whatever. And just look at the back, all the straps, look at the tool tape, it's staying in place. And the grommets are not too bad. They could be worse, they could be better, but I will take them as they are. And just for comparison, here is me in this dress with my regular everyday bra. 
as you can see, the uh, breasts are quite visible <laughs> uh, and pronounced and skipping my shirt away from me. And then with this new 1920s bra, you can see from the front is already flat and from the side is super flat, which makes my gut stick out and I do not love it. Hopefully when I have the final dress, it will look better, but the difference is enormous. It really is huge. So that is it. What a wild ride it's been. When I started this project with that corselet pattern, I didn't really think that I would end up scrapping it all together and basically doing my own um, 1920s bra from scratch. But that's just how things work out sometimes. And I learned a ton in the process. And now I have 1500 eyelets that I need to use because yeah, of course, you need 14 eyelets, so you buy a whole set of 1500. Isn't that what normal people do? But anyhow, uh, I am very happy with how, how this bra turned out. Um, it's, it's definitely not perfect, but it will do what I needed to do. So that is the main thing. And it was fun and in a strange kind of way because I don't tend to relish challenges and being faced with the challenge of having to make this thing from from nothing um definitely was daunting at first but i ended up loving it so that is all that i have for you today i hope that you enjoy this wild ride as much as i did thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye